Hi guys, welcome to Guilt Free Mind. The topic that I am going to discuss today is actually pretty serious. So I would like you to listen to it with open mind and heart. The topic of discussion for today is how to help someone who is dealing with PTSD. This is not for you if you are the person dealing with PTSD. However, hearing or watching this video might help you understand the perspective of someone who is close to you or is helping you through it. This video is specifically for those who are trying to help others who are dealing with PTSD. PTSD is a very debilitating condition. People with PTSD find it very hard to cope in their day-to-day -day lives. PTSD has a tendency of, you know, bringing out the worst in us because we are constantly afraid. If you have PTSD, you will constantly be agitated, afraid of the triggers, afraid of a trigger occurring, afraid of a trigger triggering your past memories, afraid of flashbacks, lack of sleep. Imagine a normal person, you know, of being afraid of sleeping. When a normal person is afraid of sleeping, they are going to become irritable. When we have lack of sleep, we become grouchy and irritable the next day. Now imagine a person who has PTSD. This person is probably afraid of sleeping on a day-to-day -day basis. Their body tries to not go into sleep because then the body will have to give up control, give up some of the control, give up that alertness that is protecting them. This is why people who have PTSD have mood swings, stages of anger, irritation, lashing out. Now you, as a caretaker, must be going through a lot. I understand. And that is why I'm here to help you deal with all of the problems and make life better for you as well as the person who is actually suffering from PTSD. Now, before you understand why, you know, how you can help your better half or the other person, your loved one who is suffering from PTSD, you need to understand why these triggers happen. Why is the person getting angry all the time? PTSD is a condition that occurs because of trauma. So the person is afraid of, you know, being transported back into that trauma, afraid of any trigger that may make the person relive the trauma, afraid of phrases, if in case it's an emotional abuse, afraid of phrases that may bring back the past trauma, if it's physical abuse, afraid of going to a place that may remind them of, you know, an accident or something like that. So these people are living in a state of constant terror. Imagine if you are living in a, you know, situation where you are constantly afraid you cannot help but being afraid. You can, you are afraid to get down from the bed. You are afraid to talk to anyone. You are afraid that people will say something that will just remind you of the past and memories you don't want to revisit. Imagine how difficult your life will be. This is how difficult a person with PTSD has, you know, faces. Their lives are not easy and PTSD is not a phase. Please stop referring to PTSD as phase. You need to provide support to your loved one. You need to show them that you are going to be there. And you are not leaving them to deal with their problems alone. Because PTSD can take a heavy toll and can really, you know, break a person from the inside if they don't have support. Now, I will show you what you're supposed to do if you have someone who is suffering from PTSD and how to help them overcome the problem. Now, the first tip would be to provide these people with social support. This does not mean that you ask the person to go out and start partying. Social support does not mean this. By social support, I mean that you need to understand the perspective of your loved one. You need to be there for them. PTSD can make, you know, talking about problems very difficult. And when this happens, you should not force the person to open up. They'll do it, but in their own time and pace. If you probe them and poke them and, you know, repeatedly ask them to open up and tell you about their problems, they might just, you know, shut down all the more. Thus, never pressure your loved one into talking to you and regaling their traumatic events to you. It is a traumatic event for a reason. No one wants to go through their worst part of their lives again and again. If they are not comfortable, do not force them. Do the things you know you do normally with them. Try to make them feel involved if they want and are showing, you know, signs. 
encourage them to do their day-to-day -day activities like going for a walk, uh, cooking a light meal, or you know, writing in the journal, uh, engaging in rhythmic exercises like running, stretching, walking, etc. And you know, stuff like that. So basically what they would do before, what they did before PTSD, they need to learn to get back to that life slowly and gradually. You can also allow your loved ones to take the lead. Sometimes, uh, in some cases of PTSD, like if the person's been in an accident or was in the military, they may get scared of, you know, sudden sounds, sudden sights. So you need to avoid, you know, exposing them to such stimulations that can induce PTSD images. Sudden sounds, sudden sights, loud noises, sudden clap. These are the things that can, you know, the brain does not process the things normally. And that is what you need to understand. So any kind of sudden movement can be perceived as a threat by the brain. And this is something that the loved ones need to understand because many a times we do the mistake of, you know, suddenly clapping loudly and then we realize, oh my God, we shouldn't have done that. Scared the person. But these are little pointers that if you keep in your mind will make the life of a person who is suffering from PTSD so much more easy. Now, you need to also learn to manage your own stress. Like, I am giving you a list of things you need to do to help someone with PTSD, but what about you? You need to focus on yourself as well. You need to focus on your own self-care along with taking care of your loved ones. So never forget yourself in the process. Learn about PTSD. Gather as much knowledge as you can about PTSD. Support your loved ones. Be patient towards them. PTSD is not something that is that you know has a straight road to recovery. So these patients may you know start to do better, and then they may, uh, what's the word? They may relapse into their traumatic event. You know you may see them getting better, and then suddenly one day they are back to how they were used to, how they used to be. And then you you left wondering what happened? What did I do wrong? I mean I have not done anything. Why is there a setback? Why is the treatment not working? This is just the way PTSD works. I mean, even the healing part of PTSD can have setbacks. So you need to be ready to, you know, face it and uh, deal with it in a positive manner, obviously, not in a negative manner. You need to accept that you will also have some mixed feelings towards the whole thing. You cannot always be positive, especially when it is you who is, you know, going through so much. So this was all about the first tip. Now the second one is you have to be a good listener. Eventually there will come a point of time when your partner or your loved one is ready to open up about the trauma. When this happens, you have to maintain an absolutely non-judgmental, non-condescending aura around yourself. If they feel that you are judging them, if you offer unsolicited, unsolicited advice, they are just going to you know, track back into their shell. So what you have to do here is be, just provide, you know, unparalleled support. That is all they need. Don't tell them it's a phase and it's going to go away. Don't tell them that you will never get better. Don't tell them it's all in your head. Tell them things are going to get better. They will take time, but yes, they will become better eventually. Tell them, I'm here for you. Tell them, if you need someone to talk to, you can always come to me. These are the ways you show your support to the person who is suffering from PTSD. And trust me, this support means a lot to them. Don't give them ultimatums or threats or don't discuss your personal experiences either. Your personal experience is different from what they might be experiencing. And, you know, uh, like uh, bringing it all together doesn't help. That person has finally had the courage to open up and tell you about their trauma. It's a big step. You should encourage them. You should say this is a huge step. You are moving in the right direction. We are going to battle this. It'll take time. It may take months. It may take years. But I am here for you. That is what they want to hear. Not that I'm giving you a phase. You know, be okay within the next three months or I will, you know... This is over. I cannot deal with it. This is not what they want to hear. This is not what they can handle when their mental state is already so fragile. Next, you have to work on rebuilding that safety and trust that the person originally had in you.
as i mentioned do not give them un- sudden surprises do not make sudden noises do not suddenly start talking in a loud voice do not do any of these things all you have to do is create a routine for them so that you know managing tasks become easy for them to uh complete then you can also uh, advise them to use to do list so that they can cross off each of the task and you know feel better about it that they've done so much they've achieved so much in today's date they'll make future plans with them because ptsd you know kind of makes people feel that they have very limited future and who knows they might not even be alive if they've had a physical trauma who knows what might happen any time in the world so you have to make them feel safe make them realize that there is a future waiting for them and that it's okay to make plans you know make them feel empowered encourage even the tiniest of the things if they are you know asking for your help be supportive and be there for them eventually they will learn to handle and manage their stress but you need to help them if you feel that a counselor can help you know, encourage that person to go to a counselor if uh, you feel that you know these people tend to isolate themselves from the society because they feel no one understands what they are going through or people will judge them and a million of other things are going on in their heads so you have to be completely 100% supportive tell them that it's okay if you need a therapy uh, you need you know if you need to go into therapy or if you need the help of a therapist i'm here with you i will take you along if they don't feel that you, you know you are well qualified to give them advice ask someone who wouldn't they trust and believe in to give them the advice to go to a psychologist make sure to measure your words before you you know allow them to leave your mouth because it can have a negative impact on the person suffering from ptsd if they are angry at you you need to keep yourself calm because they probably don't have a control over what they are feeling because of you know the constant agitation and the muscle tightness and the irritation and all the frustration that they are feeling because they feel that everything is out of their control you um you know as a part of supporting someone with ptsd you also have to learn about ptsd and you have to understand the triggers what triggers them You can either keep a close eye on them if they are not, you know, ones to talk and tell you, but if they are people who, you know, prefer to talk to you who are comfortable telling you what triggers their problem, then you need to take those problems very seriously and make sure that those triggers are not present in the environment. It can be loud noises, it can be a specific tone of voice, it can be um, cla- hand clapping, it can be um sudden, you know, exposure to something you have to understand that and behave accordingly these are some things you know that these are very small things but they will make it very easy for the person who has ptsd to come out of it and you know lead a better life